everyone. Welcome to Pal Detect Live. How you doing? Are we on? Are we live? Yanni's here. How you doing? Uti, Uti, help me pronounce it. How are you going to help me pronounce it? Um, <laughs> Andrew, how's it going? How are you folks doing on this awesome Friday? Um, this is going to be a reasonably short stream, maybe half an hour. And I thought I would connect with you. We'll do a little catch up. I want to clarify something from this morning's video, and I've got some tips to show you for a domain name. If you have your own website, I'm going to give you three tips that I think will really help you out for your photography business. And then we'll do a little Q&A and pretty much wrap it up after that. So, all right, let's see who's here. Camera Tim in the house. By the way, I can slam my hands now on the desk because I got this cheap little, um, I don't know if you can see it, this little $13 pad, <laughs> right? So it's not gonna, I have a boom mic right here and the audio from, you know, like if I take a camera and I put it down on the desk, people were complaining that it was, was hurting their ears. So I got this cheap little pad and I hope it helps. If it doesn't, please let me know. Also, little housekeeping, let me know if there's a problem with the audio. The reason I'm doing this live stream, you know, spur of the moment today, is because I'm testing out a new audio system that I have. And if it works out and the audio sounds good to you, then I'm done. I'm, I'm all finished with testing audio and I can just continue doing these streams and not worry about it. So, okay. Eric, hello to Chicago. Raf, I just connected with you about an hour ago. How are you doing, pal? Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, we got everybody here. Okay, so I'm going to do my best. Paul, I see you, pal. There you are. Paul Watters is here. Um, I'm getting better at these comments as they come in, but if I don't see your comment, rest assured that after the stream, I what I do is I download a file from this program. It has everybody's comments in like an Excel and you know, late at night I read them. So I will see it. Um, I may not see it today right now, but I will definitely see it before tonight. So, okay. Anyhow, let's do a little clarification. Um, I published a video this morning and it was all about cropping on video on Fujifilm cameras. And there was one additional item I forgot to mention and I, I wish I had, and that has to do with if you have an X-T3, I believe it's an X-T3, and you're shooting F-Log, I believe that will put the camera into a crop mode. So for example, if you are, say you're, um, okay, you're in the camera, and can I get my picture in picture? No, I can't. Okay. If you're, yeah, I can. Hi. Okay. So if I am getting better at this, aren't I? All right. So if you're in the camera menu and you go down to uh, F log, H log recording in the X-T3 and you choose F log, I think that that will kick off a crop. I think it's a 1.1. I'm not a hundred percent and I can't demo this for you because I am using the Fujifilm X-T3 to shoot this live stream. This is the X-T4, so I can't show you. And by the time I figured that out, it was too late. I had to start the live stream. So if you have an X-T3, see if that works. Put it in F-Log like that. Keep it at, try it at, you know, 24 frames a second and see if when you go back here, you get a crop, little crop symbol in the upper left corner of the window, okay? Hope that clarifies. I, I think I got a question about that. So, okay, who else is here? Florian, Kyle. Uh, you know what? You're right. I didn't mention sports mode. Damn it! I just realized that. That good point. I yes, sports mode is a crop, a, a rather significant one. And I was so focused on the video section of the camera, I missed that. And yes, thank you for bringing that up. If you're in sports mode, and that I think I can show you right now. Um, okay, if you're in sports mode, you go into, let me switch it over to still. Okay, you still seeing that? Good. Okay, so if you're in um, sports mode, here we go, sports finder mode, turn it on. I think at that point, yeah, there's the crop. You all see it? It's in the upper left. It's 1.25 times crop. So, okay. Sports finder mode will also do that. Um, yeah, that's great. Boy, I I got to check these things more carefully and I missed that as well. So thank you for letting me know. Um, 
Good, Andrew, the audio is good. Thank you for letting me know that. That is great. Francesco Ferroni, is that how it's pronounced? Francesco, hello, great to meet you. How you doing? Um, Fran Francesco Ferroni, Ferroni. Uh, my, I'm sorry, my pronunciation is probably terrible. Okay, so let's jump into the main subject here for just a bit. And it actually is quite important. And I don't see a lot of photographers thinking about it a lot because it's such a boring subject. Anything that's really boring, like taxes, say, <laughs> unless you're an accountant, then, then they're fascinating. But for most people, domain names are one of the more boring things. You know, you buy one once and then you spin up your website and you don't think about it. And if I can hopefully impress upon you today, there are a couple of things you need to think about now. In fact, there's something you should do before the sun sets today. So I'm gonna go through the three tips I have for you. It won't take very long. I promise I'll make it interesting. And if you do have a domain name or if you're thinking of getting a domain name, then this is really important. And keep in mind that there is a difference between owning your domain, you know, yourbusiness.com and having a website. Those would be two different things. I'm talking about the domain name. And that is actually the most important piece of branding real estate that you can have. Because if you think about it, right, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, those are all private services. They're all private. They're locked down. They can go away at any time. They can close your account at any time. They can kick you off. They could, whatever they want to do, they, they own that. But if you own your own domain name, like I own paltotech.com, so Instagram could boot me, Twitter could boot me, you know, they could all, I, I could lose my accounts or they could go out of business or they just become less popular. I mean, look at MySpace. So what will never change is paltotech.com. And I can always have that direct to a website or to whatever I want. And, and that's so important if you run a photography business. And you should register one in your own name if you don't have one already. Definitely the, the name of the business, but, you, but suppose you have XYZ Photography, then it should be XYZPhotography.com. But if your name is Martin Smith and you own XYZ Photography, you really should register XYZ Photography and MartinSmith.com. Try and get your own name as well. I wasn't able to do that but you never know when you're gonna use it, and it's about $9 to register a domain name, okay? So let me go through the three tips right now. How are we doing on here? Hello, Bahrain, Middle East. Okay, oh yeah, your picture in picture is over where the crop is on the screen. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, um, he, that would be correct. All right, there it is, 1.25. See it, upper left, and there's no, pip, there's no pip. Actually, what if I did the pip down here? There it is. Okay, so it's it's up it's up there. Um, it's it's <laughs> I'm looking in a mirror. It's that away, <laughs> right? Okay, okay. Let's do this. So here we go with three, right? Three photography domain. Oh, I'm blocking it again. Three photography domain name tips. Okay, so what do we have here? The first tip is. Understand and update your four contact information categories. Every domain name that you register, whatever.com, always has four pieces of information associated with it, always. And each of those little, think of them as little canoes going down the river. Each of those four canoes can contain a name, an email, a mailing address, and a phone number. Okay, and usually they're all the same, but sometimes they're different. And for example, I have my domains registered with, I, I have them registered with a company called Name Silo, and I am not sponsored by Name Silo. I don't even think they're that great. They're fine. I mean, they do a great job for what I need, but they're not sponsoring this video. I want to be clear about that. Um, what, one of the things I do like about Name Silo is that they only deal with domains, whereas GoDaddy deals with domains, web hosting, and all these other things. They're constantly trying to push those other things on you. Name Silo is just domain names. And you can have your domain name hosted here and your website 
hosted there. You can have them in different places, okay? So, and hello, San Diego, Ricardo. I'm going to keep dropping in, you know, every few minutes. All right, so back to here. So when you sign into your domain account and you are kind of in your, you know, your main area, so to speak, when you pull up one of your domain names, and this is an actual domain name that I own, paldetect.net. I register .com, .org, and .net. And you should do that too if you have a business. So I got all three. So I'm just for purposes of this demo, I'm showing you .net, okay? When you go into your registrar and you see it, there is an area, okay? And it is down below. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in. Okay, so see, there we go. Nope, there are four things here. There's registrant, administrative, technical, and billing, four of them, okay? And the, the one that you really must check, the one that is absolutely the most important of all, and please make sure that this is registered with a correct email, a correct address, and a correct phone number is the registrant. It's this one right here. Think of Registron as the copyright owner of your domain name. So that is your first tip is if you have a domain, go into your registrar, check under Registrant and make sure that it is correct. Because if it's not correct, suppose you have a business and suppose you have an employee that did a lot of your kind of paperwork and accounting and things like that. And suppose they left three years ago and they put their name there when they registered the domain for you and it's in their name. That could be a big problem for you at some point further down. So check that before the sun sets today. Make sure it's your name. Make sure it's your contact information. And best practice really would be to have perhaps one set of contact information for the registrant and another one for say technical or billing, right? That way, if there's a problem with the account, emails will be sent to both, and you know, you'll have a higher likelihood of taking action on it. But that's really, really important, okay? Any questions on that? Let me know. I am Zoomed, aren't I? Oh my goodness. Okay, <laughs> okay there you go. You don't wanna get that close to me, okay? I mean, I'm, you know, maybe 30 years ago, I have not the wrinkles now. So, okay. So next, next, all right, tip number two. Okay, where are we here? Let's go back, boom, boom, boom. Okay, so that was number one. Tip number two, to register common misspellings. That is, uh, I am so surprised why that a lot of people don't do that. So for example, if you have xyzphotography.com, maybe register XYZ photography, but misspell photography, because people misspell things all the time when they type it into a web browser. And what you wanna do is register a few names and then the ones that are misspelled, right? Have the ones that are misspelled direct over to your actual website. And I did exactly that, okay? So what I did, I registered, um, let me see if I can show you here. Uh, I registered, yeah, look, you got pal to, you've got pal to text, pal to T-E-C, you see that? All of those should go to palvatech.com. And you can apply that to your own, you know, don't go crazy with this. I mean, there's no need to register. Ah, it's too close. Okay, there's no need to register, you know, 900 variations. But if you have a common spelling or if your name is difficult to pronounce or difficult to spell, then make sure you have several names registered that point to the real one that is your website. Okay, that's tip number two. Okay, how are we doing here? Mm-hmm. Pal to, pal to text, I like that. Look, now everybody's putting weird spellings. But yeah, you've got the, you got the idea, Raph. You got the right idea. All right, let's see where we are. We are back here. Okay, so the third and final tip is to use and understand email forwarding. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but um, if you ever had a free account with Gmail, but using Google Suite with your own domain name, so like I have chris.lee at paldetect.com, for example, and I just gave out my email address. Oh, well, <laughs> don't send me too much email. So if in that case, 
I was using G Suite for free for many years. Well, now they're starting to charge me, and I don't want to. I don't want to pay the monthly fee for it. So, there's two types of email addresses that exist. Okay, and the first type is regular email, and that's what you think of when you think of an email address. You know, your name at something dot com or name of business at something dot com. That's a regular email and people can send email to it. You receive email at it and you can write back to people and it functions and acts like a regular email address. Gmail is just like that, okay? The second one is called an alias. And the reason I mention that is because those generally are free. They're not real email inboxes. What they are, They're email addresses, so you can put one on your site and you can spin up as many of them as you want. Suppose you have a photography business and it's just one person, right? But you wanna make it seem like you've got this huge office tower with seven different departments and photographers and videographers just shooting round the clock, right? You can do that, you can do that. And what you do is you would set up a bunch of email aliases, right? So you would have, you know, your first name dot last name at your business.com billing at your business.com um general inquiries at your business.com technical support at your business.com oh my god you put all those over it looks like and they could all behind the scenes they all just forward to your gmail or to whatever is your email that you check every day. Nobody needs to know that. They think that there's all these, you know, people and businesses. So that is one way you can, you know, seem bigger than you really are. But more importantly, what you can do with aliases is if you register a domain name, and now I'm getting into tip number three. If you register a domain name, okay, let me show you what I mean. Let me go to the screen. And here, okay, so, um, I, for example, I registered paltotech.net. Suppose I wanted to put an email associated with that, but I don't really, I'm not going to use that as my primary email, but I do, in case somebody happens to send an email there, I want it to get to me. And suppose I, you know, I'm stuck back and partying like it's 1999 and I'm still using AOL. Okay, I have, you know, pal to tech at AOL.com. And that's, I'm never leaving that. I'm going to check that email forever. Well, what I can do is I can go into my registrar account into GoDaddy or Name Silo or Squarespace or wherever, you know, my domain name is. And if you have a look at this and see it, there is an area right here and it's called email forwarding, email forwarding. You see that? And when you click on that, it will take you to a place where you can edit that information. And let me see if I can get it to it where that editing area is. Okay, hold on. Okay, one second. Yeah, for some reason that slide's not going up. Let me switch back here and then back. Yeah. Okay, well, that slide's not coming up and that's really odd, but basically in your domain name account, there's an area where you can choose and just add as many aliases as you want to whatever domain that you registered. Usually it's up to 100 and they're free. They don't cost anything. So it's a free way of getting email and having that email, basically having a public email address that's on your website, could be on your business cards or whatever. And when someone sends an email to that, it automatically gets forwarded to your real email address. Now there's one catch to all of this. And that is if you're using an email forward, an alias, instead of a regular email, if you go to write back to somebody, if you click reply, if you respond to somebody, that response is going to come from whatever your real email address is. So keep that in mind. Um, I would use it for stuff like for, for this channel, right? What I would use it for would be Let's say, oh, I don't know, I had 100,000 subscribers. I mean, right? Let's say I had 100,000 subscribers. And let's say I was going to put together a video where I was going to ask the audience, hey, do you have any questions for me? Submit them to, well, if I didn't want to put my regular email out there, I would say submit them to, you know, pal to tech 100 k at pal to tech.com. And that alias would then forward those questions over to me. 
Does that make sense? I hope I'm clear. I hope this hasn't been too confusing. Those are my three email tips for, sorry, three domain tips for you today. Okay, where are we at here? We got, uh, let me take a look here. Oh, I've missed a lot of stuff. Okay, let me go back. Uh, okay, hi, Ricardo. Hello, hello. Okay, um, Raf, somebody's, okay, let me put this on here. Um, let me see if I can drag this onto the, okay. So Raf says he thought about hosting emails on Synology. I thought about that too, but um, I decided not to do that. And the reason is simply because of keeping up with things like spam control, you know, um, M not MX records, what are they called? Um, DKIM, there's a whole bunch of stuff you have to know when you're hosting email. I mean, that's a, that is a specialty. That is a dedicated full-time operation of managing email. So I probably would not recommend anybody host their own email. A website, a small little website, if, if you've got the, a dedicated IP address and you've got a server and all that, you might be able to make that work. But email is two-way and it's two-way that gets abused a lot with spam. So just think about that before you spin up one of those, in, especially in Synology. Um, but it's actually, say, I had the same idea, so great minds think alike. Uh, yes, 100K is coming. <laughs> I know it is. I'm so stressed about that, and I don't know why. I shouldn't be. I should be thrilled. I should be happy. But I'm, I'm really stressed about that. And there's going to be some changes with this channel afterwards. It is definitely a milestone because once I hit 100, it's, it's kind of like that all that anticipation, all that, oh my gosh, you know, a goal ahead of me, this big goal, this hunt, all that's going to be gone. And so in some ways, I'm going to be a lot more relaxed. You know, I won't be so stressed when a video performs like the one this morning that I published at only number seven, which it didn't do very well. So hopefully I'll calm down a bit once I hit 100,000. So that's, I am looking forward to it, but I'm also a little a little nervous about it because I don't quite know. It's so beyond what I could imagine. And and I know you hear a lot of YouTubers say, oh, this is incredible. It's beyond what I ever thought. I, honestly, it it's it's so far off my radar and so out of my reach and so unfathomable to me that it's stressing me out. It, it, it's stressing me, it, it's too much. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy, don't get me wrong. I'm, I mean, I'm not appreciative of it, but it sets a bar of, holy crap, man, you have 100,000 subscribers. And that doesn't mean I've got 100,000 people watching the videos by a long shot. Um, I get more excited with the tiny little group we have in backstage, but it's still a pretty big number. And, you know, it, it, there are gonna be some changes with the channel. Um, and, um, yeah, so, and I don't wanna go through the changes right now, but there will definitely be some changes. No, I am not getting rid of Fujifilm content. That is not going away, okay? But there will be some other changes as well for the for the channel. Um, okay, so we got a question here. Do I use different emails for your communication or only one for everyone? That depends. I mean, first of all, you gotta separate work and personal. Do you have an email for personal that you only share and use for personal? Do you have an email for work that you only use there? I would suggest doing it that way, to be honest with you, but some people don't, and some people can make one address to rule them all, and, and they don't have any problem doing that. And so whatever you do, it's, it's best to always err on the side of having less gathering points to manage, having less email accounts to manage. That's a, a place you should always be targeting going. Um, because it's just another thing that you have to check. Uh, or if you get a new device, right, it's another thing you have to set up. And so the less emails, the better. I would say two, maybe three tops. Personally, I think I've got four now. I've whittled it down. I used to have a lot more, but I whittled, whittled it down to four. So, um, and, and actually what I did was I had Timely Photo, which that is now just forwarding to Pal the text. So I kind of don't even check that one really anymore. Anybody that writes to Timely Photo, I respond back from Pal the text. So yeah, I've got pretty much three right now. Um, uh, <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> All right. So this is an interesting comment, Florian. What, what, a storytelling guide. Is that like, what do you mean? How to tell a story or or what? A story? Do you want to hear a story like about an XT3 or a story about the channel or just how to tell a story? I mean, that's a good, I mean, let me know, please. That's an interesting comment. Um, Oh, we got Francis talking tech here. I love it, man. An SMTP server for your domain name. Okay, yep, up, 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 good. That's right, you can. I didn't want to get into SMTP and setting all that up, but that's a very good point. That's a really good point. Um, yes, uh, okay, there we go. Yes, I will go over the why I created this channel. There is a definite reason. I mean, it was created for a number of reasons, but there is one big overreaching reason and it's not a dare or a bet or anything like that however it is an important reason and it's so important that i'm going to dedicate an entire video to it and that is going to be part two of a two-part video celebration of the channel when i hit 100 so you know the first part will be hooray it's 100 yay let's celebrate and show funny clips and all that kind of thing then the second part a little more serious talking about why i created the channel in the first place so yeah, that's coming. Okay, what do we have? Let's see, look in here. Okay, so Ken, you ask about changes. One of the things I'm noticing with this channel, and I don't wanna to get too much into the changes or going down that road right now, but to answer your question, he, Ken's asking what, why change? I'm noticing that it is not gonna be sustainable for me to continue doing only Fujifilm. I mean, that that's just not sustainable. At some point you get, and I think Omar went through this, and I've talked about this before, but you get to a point where how many settings can you go over? And yes, you can get into general photography, and that could be the direction, or you get into lighting, or you get into these other things. But the idea of me doing a Fast Friday with a camera attached going, well, you, you go through here. I mean, I'm running out of menu choices, folks, right? Now, if an X-H2 is, let's just say, loaned to me, I will definitely do videos on how to use that, how to get into the, you know, all that kind of great tech stuff. But as far as future of the channel, the channel has to serve, you know, let me see if I have this image. Hold on one second. Um, I've got all this stuff here, but one of the things I've got, okay. So let me see if I can show you this. Um, Okay. Oh, you know what? My, oh, my comments got stuck. Oh, there's a whole lot more comments I didn't even see. Okay. Um, so let, yeah. All right. So here, t take a look at this. Okay. Um, so I did a little video chart and it, I can invest a lot of time in a video. For example, focus modes of the X-T3, right? Or I could invest very little time, you know, Fujifilm firmware update, right? And then there's money earned by number of views. And what I've noticed is that, for example, Capture One videos is right around quadrant one, right? A lot of time invested, a lot of time invested, not much money earned, okay? Not much money earned. Um, and where I obviously where any, <laughs> I mean, I I don't any YouTuber in in the world will tell you that you give you reasons for why they do YouTube. But at the end of the day, there's one spot that every YouTuber or creative period I think eventually wants to to be at as much as possible. Okay, and that would be <laughs> would be you know right here, right where you're getting a lot of money for views but you're not putting a whole lot of time into it, okay? And I mean, you know, it, it's funny. It, it, it's hard to keep motivated sometimes with this channel because I will put in hours researching a topic and putting the video together and then editing is another day, day and a half, maybe two days sometimes. And it'll perform maybe out of the 10 previous videos, it'll be maybe number seven or eight. And then I'll just sit down one day because Fujifilm just came out with a firmware update for the X-T4. I'll sit down and I'll, 
I'll turn it on. Hey guys, and I, I I won't do anything. I'll just say there's a firmware update and it's out now and blah, 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 blah. And I go and I turn it off. I go into the editing room. It takes me, you know, half an hour to edit. I publish it and it's number one. And that that happened to my channel many times. So, you know, it feels good though when it lines up. For example, when I did the X-T4 review, when I reviewed the X-T4 camera, that was a lot of work. That was a lot of work. I shot, I, I shot footage that was never in that, but I shot a whole, a lot of stuff went into the making of that video and I wouldn't compromise on it at all. I didn't cut a thing out of it that I, I even at the expense of losing money. For example, there's a song at the end of the video. Um, I can't remember the name now. Um, House of the Rising Sun. I refuse to cut that song because I put in, I mean, this is a, what, a 15 minute video because I used, you know, less than 15 seconds of music, the entire amount of money that I would have made off the X-T4 video went to the songwriters, um, which I have very strong feelings about how that whole thing works, but that's, that's the reality. You use even just three seconds, that's it but I did not want to take that song out. I refused to cut it. And it felt so good to me, even though I didn't make one dime off that video, it felt good to me that the amount of work I put into it equaled, right, the amount of views and response and people liked the video and that kind of thing. It's a, it's a balancing act. And it really is these four things. I mean, it, it's, it's as simple as that. So I prefer the longer content. I'm never doing shorts. I did a few, tried them out, never going to do them. I don't like, and I'll tell you why. I've got my own reason why. And it's it's not because I think vertical video is not as good as, you know, horizontal. It's not. But I, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm The reason I'm not doing shorts is it, it was absolutely drop dead cringe to me to see what my channel looked like with those shorts thumbnails. You can't control the thumbnail in a shorts video. They just grab a frame. And it, it's if you go look at some YouTubers who normally have these awesome, incredible thumbnails, and then you look at their shorts shelf, right? And it's like their mouths are half hanging out. It's blurry, like, you know, it, it just, it looks terrible. It looks unprofessional. It, it, it just looks terrible. And I know they're supposed to be informal, but it's not what I wanted for the channel. So I actually went back, it bothered me so much and YouTube, I'm sure one day will allow a custom thumbnail for shorts. But until they do, I'm not doing them. And that's a big reason. I just thought they looked terrible. So that and frankly, how much can you tell people in 60 seconds? Yes, it's, a, it's fun to try. But at the end of the day, what it wound up doing for me was it forced me to talk faster. And I talk too fast as it is. So I was going, you know, bum, 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 the mile a minute and working in that frame trying it, it just it wasn't for me that's all so i deleted all of my shorts content and i'm not making any more not for a while not until they can do that fix that thumbnail problem right okay uh and yes uh camera tim is 1000 percent correct thumbnails make or break it for sure absolutely um they're extremely 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 important okay so where are we at here? We're talking about YouTube, long form, put the algorithm to work. Yeah, podcast. Okay, so um, I thought about doing a separate channel, but I'm going to hold off on that for a while because I feel that, that this channel isn't even almost close to being mature, developed, running without problem. I mean, I'm struggling all the time. Even right now in this live stream, you know, I'm talking, you're hearing me talk, but the back of my mind, right? The little voice that I have inside my head is going, God damn it, the sound quality might be screwed up. Oh, that I got the last slide, that didn't work. I'm da 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 da. It, it's just always doing that. So until I can quiet that down a little bit with this channel, I'm not gonna start up another channel because now it's double. It's double the amount for me. And I think there's so much still left to explore with this channel. Um, so Fujifilm to bring this back to where we started, there's going to be some changes and most of the changes you won't see. 
there, a lot of the changes are going to be right here in my head. They're going to be mental changes. Um, l reducing the desperation, reducing the franticness of trying to keep this channel, you know, chug chugging and get as many videos out as possible. There's a lot of pressure. And I feel like when you hit 100,000, then what? What, a million? You know, that's not going to happen. A million? So that's so, that's so far off. Then, you know, it's kind of like I blasted off in a rocket. I'm flying through the solar system. Oh, hi, there's Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, Saturn, Pluto. Okay, now what? Oh, I'll just, okay, I'm done. Now I can relax. It's a long way to Alpha Centauri, right? Okay, so where are we here? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm going to do photography tips more. That is one of the things I'd like to explore, particularly with regard to flash. That is under, rep Flash does not get a good rap on this channel. So Flash is something that I wanna get more into. Um, the other thing is I do have a backlog of reviews of photography gear, specifically photography gear, not necessarily smartphone gear. Now I did do a smartphone video cage review. And the reason I did that is because several of the, t the most top performing videos ever on my channel had nothing to do with photography. They had to do with AirPods, they had to do with webcams, and they had to do with um, iPhones. So I kind of have to, to balance this out. And the last thing I'm going to say, because I really don't want to get too far into the changes and all that, Friday video is never going to change. Friday video is going to be the same. It'll be Fast Friday, be Fujifilm related. It'll be just what you know and love now. It's kind of what I'm doing Monday through Thursday that I'm kicking around. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. All right, Vishal is here, how you doing? Okay, so where are we here? Uh, let me go back to see if I missed anybody. Has anyone been using Capture One 22 at all? Um, I am gonna do the first in the series. I'm, I'm actually just gonna jump into a new series with Capture One 22 instead of trying to keep the 20 version going. So um, let me know if you have any things you want me to go into on Capture 122. Um, I need to give that a little bit more love for sure. Um, okay, goodbye, Raph. I'll see you around, pal. Okay, silver play button. Yes, 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 it is. Bonjour, Pascal. How you doing? Okay, good. So anybody have any questions for me i am going to be signing off in about five minutes so uh yeah we're coming up to five o'clock here uh questions about anything i'll answer about the channel about uh about the cameras about what's coming up with fujifilm what what i think is coming up with fujifilm uh about anything let me know uh here we go i've been using to see here okay Alan's been using Capture 22. Great, great, great. Okay, so we got to look, dig into these features. Thank you, Ken. Um, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, that was a that was a fun that was a great video to do for sure. Um, Madeira, where is that? Madeira is Capture One and Light. Okay, here's a question. Um, <laughs> anybody want to jump in and help answer this one? Uh, is Capture One and Lightroom good for different purposes or both good? Okay, they're both good. I mean, Lightroom doesn't suck. I mean, it's a good piece of software for how far it's developed and all of the organization that you can do on it. Now, I'm assuming that you're shooting with Fujifilm RAW files. If that is the case, no. I will take the Pepsi challenge right now. Capture One is better with RAW files out of the gate with a minimum of fuss. Can you edit and manipulate raw files, Fujifilm raw files in Lightroom to make them as good as you get them in Capture One? You can get pretty damn close, but Capture One, I, and I realized where this was going when I opened up the box that had the Fujifilm X-T4 camera in it. When I opened up that box, right? I even have it in the unboxing video. Out came, before I pulled the camera out of the box, the very first thing I took out of that box was a little promo card that, and I paid for this with my own money. This isn't some test demo Fuji sent me. When I opened that X-T4 up, that little promo card said, you know, free Capture One and Fuji. We've been working together to 
you know, make great looking raw files. And I thought to myself, okay, that's going to be the editor of choice moving forward for sure. Uh, at least the raw processor of choice. Uh, now there is, you know, DXO and there's some others that are coming into play and I've got some videos on those, but, but to answer your question, they're both good. Lightroom is a bit easier to get started with and it, a lot of minimum of hassle for several settings. Capture One you can is really good for stuff like skin tones, um, more advanced, I think more advanced color manipulation. Um, and, you know, I think it's a bit faster, at least on my computer, it's a bit faster as well. Uh, okay. That's a good question from Irvin. I... <sighs> Honestly, I don't know. And that all depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a lot of image manipulation, you know, serious image manipulation to portraits, or you are, you know, you're a, say you're a cosplay photographer and you're doing weird backgrounds and putting people on different planets and stuff like that, you have to have Photoshop. If you're just shooting, let's say you're just, not just, let's say your specialty is shooting weddings and that's all you're that's the only type of photography you do and you've got a process down do you need photoshop i don't think so i mean maybe for some some cases but it just depends on how far you go and what you can do in your skill sets photoshop for me i couldn't live without it uh, that doesn't mean I'm happy with Adobe, doesn't mean that I like to rent my software, and it doesn't mean that I don't at least swear at the computer once a week when I'm using it. But Photoshop is incredible in what it can do. So, you know, it basically can do some things that Lightroom cannot, and ha it has way more advanced features with it, masking and things like that, that go beyond what Lightroom or Capture One can do. Uh, landscape and infrared. Yeah, I, I would say, I'd say Photoshop. I'd say Photoshop. It's such a mature product, you know. Uh, you can't go wrong. There's going to be, listen, if you were to say, I want to know how to edit an infrared shot taken three years ago at the South Pole when the sun was in the 11 o'clock position and there were four penguins in the upper right corner, somebody has a tutorial on how to do that in Photoshop. DaVinci Resolve. All right. Well, that's, you know, Camera Tim, that is, I have thought about going with Resolve and there's only one reason I didn't go with Resolve and that is this laptop right here. Um, I gave, I listen, I have been a, an Apple fan. I'm not a fanboy, but I've been a fan all the way since 1979 when I saw Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak at the fair in, Los, in uh, San Francisco. And they were, you know, sitting in a corner. I don't even think Jobs is wearing shoes, <laughs> but I've been a fan and I've had a lot of different kinds of Macs. I came this close to giving them up. And I thought, all right, I'll try that. This is their, their keyboard I hear is getting better. I'll try this M1 Max. I'll see. And this is it. I mean, this is it. Like Michael Jackson, this is it. This is it. And so I got it. And Final Cut Pro on this computer is the fastest thing I've ever seen. I mean, I am editing four 4K video streams in real time, multicam, and I'm not rendering, I'm not creating proxy footage. It's just working great. So do I want to then now stop and go to Resolve? No, not, not right. I just don't have the time to learn it. It's not that I don't think Resolve is good. I think Resolve is probably awesome. I'm sure it's better at color correction than Final Cut Pro. But for my day-to-day, -day, what I'm needing right now, and the fact I don't have a staff, I got to make do with what I have. And right now, this is working for me. So doesn't mean I don't have my gripes with Final Cut. I actually was going to do a video on, you know, 10 things that piss me off about Final Cut. Probably wouldn't be of interest to this audience, but there are 10 things that, I, <laughs> that piss me off about Final Cut. Sometimes I need to make a video where I just gripe. Would you mind if I did that from time to time? Please let me know in the comments. I'll read them tonight. I, sometimes I really need to make a video where it's just a rant video, you know, and I, I just, I don't give a crap that I have 100,000 subscribers. I want to rant about something. I get so ticked off with something. I need to rant. I need to get it off my chest, right? <laughs> so I've really been holding back, not doing that. But maybe, maybe if, if you're okay with it, maybe I'll like steam. I'll release a little bit of steam every now and then, you know, 
Final Cut Pro. <laughs> Lightroom and raw processing. <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right. It's good with Florian, so we're good there. Oh man, I don't want to go. God, the time goes by so fast. Okay, before I go, let me just qu do a quick bit of housekeeping. We are at 96 concurrent viewers. Um, please, I hope I didn't miss anybody's chat. Um, those of you just joining me, hello. Um, it's great to see you. I will most likely be back next week. Um, Aberdeen, Scotland. Oh, awesome. Okay. A lot of people want the rant. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's not, I, I just want you to know I asked first. <laughs> okay. I did do one rant video and I'll put a clip on it in the hundred thousand celebration where I just went off on Apple and their keyboard. I was really ticked off about, it. and part of it is the best kind of rant video is when you don't have a script, you don't have a teleprompter, and you actually are really pissed off. In other words, it just happened. If you wait to shoot the video, say, you know, you have, well, my studio day is Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's the day I'm in the studio. You can't do that with a rant video. With a rant video, you gotta turn on the camera and rant, right, <laughs> the minute it happens. So um, the next time, yeah, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll shoot it and then I'll decide if I'm going to publish. <laughs> right? So, okay, folks, um, this is great. Thank you so much for all of your comments. And I hope I got to everybody. If I didn't, I apologize. Um, I really appreciate you being here. And uh, yeah, let me make sure we're good here. Checking the comments. Okay. So backstage members, I will be on Discord throughout the weekend. If you want to connect, I will be there. Shoot me a message. For the rest of you, I will see you in videos next week. I've got some planned. And um, I'm, I'm really glad you, you came here and stopped by. That's just awesome. And um, by all means, if you found this video to be, I guess, what we would say helpful, you know, give it the like and subscribe. Uh, yep. Did that. Okay, we got that. And we got one more thing to do, and that's my outro. So thank you. Have a wonderful Friday. I hope you're all doing well. Stay safe, and I'll see you next week. Take care.